Okay, today we're going to talk about mole ratios and balanced equations. And um, let's look at a balanced equation. Uh, let's, let's think about, let's say, aluminum reacts with oxygen to yield or make aluminum oxide. And let's make a balanced equation from this. So we'll first take all the elements and the uh, compounds and make their formulas or symbols. So aluminum is Al plus oxygen. We're going to leave a space in case we need a coefficient. Oxygen is a diatomic element. Right? And then it's going to make aluminum oxide. And we know that aluminum oxide, the aluminum comes together with oxygen in a 2 to 3 ratio because of the charges on the ions in that compound, which we should be very comfortable making these formulas by now. Now we understand why it's so important to be able to do that quickly because we, wanna, we don't want to spend a ton of time trying to make the, form, the equation of this reaction. Okay, now we need to balance this. We can see that the aluminum is not balanced right now, right? Um, let's move from left to right across the equation. And let's balance it the best way we know. So that's, that's 2 in front of the Al. We may change that, but for now, let's just keep it like that. Um, we can see that the oxygen comes in pairs on the reactant side as an O2. And on the other side, it comes in threes. So we could switch those numbers. You could put a 3 in front of here and a 2 in front of here, and now we have the oxygen balanced. However, we've just increased the number of aluminum to 4 on the product side. So we can remedy that situation and by deleting the 2 and putting a 4 in front of the aluminum. And this is our final balanced equation. Now, I have a question for you. If I were to multiply each of these values by 12, right? So now I have 48 aluminum. If I multiply this by 12, I would have 36 oxygen atoms, or molecules, I should say. And then I multiply this by 12. The ratio between all those atoms and elements is the same, right? It makes sense, right? I could... Uh, now, what do we call groups of 12? We call that a dozen, right? So I could say I have... Technically, I could say I have four dozen aluminum plus three dozen O2 makes two dozen Al2O3, right? That just makes logical sense. <clears throat> but I could... Let's see here. I don't know if this is going to let me do this. Yes, it will. Okay. Um, all right, so now instead of this... What if I multiplied, not by 12, but I multiplied by another number, and that number is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Do you know what that is? You've seen that number before. That number is the number of a mole. It doesn't matter if I multiply each of these numbers, these coefficients, by the same number, the ratio between the atoms will remain the same. Now, I'm not going to do the math out for each of those. But I will tell you, if I did multiply each of those uh, atoms or molecules by 6.02 times 10 to the 23, now I have 4 moles of aluminum. I have 3 moles of O2, and that will make two moles of Al2O3. You'll notice that 
it's very common to uh, abbreviate the mole with just an M-O-L instead of M-O-L-E, even though the name is M-O-L-E. Yes, I know it's strange to take one letter off and then call it an abbreviation, but that's chemistry for you. So the ratio between the coefficients or the is not only the ratio between the atoms and molecules, but it's also the molar ratio or the mole ratio, the number of moles. So when you see those coefficients in front, that tells you if you had four moles of aluminum, it would take three moles of oxygen molecules to react to make two moles of aluminum oxide. So let's keep our we're going to keep our um, equation. I'm going to get rid of all this other stuff at the bottom here. All right, now let's say we wanted to know we can use this fact to uh, determine some things. First of all, let's say what is the molar ratio or the mole ratio Oop, ratio, ratio between the aluminum and the oxygen. This is how we'd write the mole ratio. We'd say 4 moles of Al to 3 moles of O2. That's as simple as that. It's, that's just a ratio, right? Now, how is this uh, mole ratio useful to us? Well, sometimes we want to know how much of a substance we need to react with another substance. So let's change our question from, let's say, how many moles of O2 are needed to react with um, eight moles of aluminum. Okay. Now you might be able to look at this really quickly and just determine what it is because you know the ratio has to stay four to three. But let's set it up formally so that when you have other questions or other values, it will be easy for you to figure this out. So um, I'm going to write a mole ratio of 3 moles of O2 to 4 moles of aluminum. And this ratio must stay the same no matter how many moles you are reacting with another. So if we have 8 moles of aluminum, I'm going to put 8 moles of aluminum right here on the bottom, and I'm going to say x, x moles of oxygen, because the ratio, again, has to stay the same. So how do we solve this, this problem? Well, I know a lot of students will cross multiply and whatnot. I don't really like to cross multiply. I'm going to multiply both sides by 8 moles of aluminum on each side because I can do the same thing on both sides of an, 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 equal, of an equality, moles of Al. And you'll notice that the, that the, um, the moles of Al on the right side of this uh, will actually cancel out. And just the mole symbol will cancel out here. And to solve for this, we do 8, 8, times 3 moles of oxygen divided by 4, and that will give us 6 moles of O2. And that is our final response right there. And this makes sense because we have double 
the moles of aluminum that are in the equation. We, we have eight moles of aluminum. So that makes sense that we would have double the moles of oxygen required because we always are multiplying by the same number across the equation because that ratio must stay the same. All right, um, one thing to be careful of is when you have uh, moles that are like fractions, sometimes that can be a little confusing. So let's take a look at one more example and then I'll let you get started on this stuff for today. Let's say we say how many moles of oxygen are needed That's going to not let me do that. Hold on. We're going to say are needed to produce um, let's let's make a funky one. Let's say 0.6 moles of Al2O3, the aluminum oxide. Okay, so now we're going to set up the ratio uh, between the aluminum oxide and the oxygen. I find it easiest and your the value you're trying to find should go on the top of this inequality. So this is going to be 0.6 moles of Al2O3. So that means that's got to be on the bottom too. This is from the equation. So 2 Al2O3. And on the top it's 3 O2. Uh, we really should say, use, I'm being a little lazy here, but it should be moles Al2O3 and 3 moles O2. Okay, I'm going to multiply again both sides by 0 0.6 moles Al2O3. Um, I cross out those on each side, on the, that side, just the moles of Al2O3 cancel out. And so I'm left with an equation, it's 0.6 times 3 divided by 2 moles of O2. And I'm going to get um, 0.9, I believe, right, moles of O2 are needed to create 0.6 moles of aluminum oxide. That's about it. Any questions?